Good evening and welcome to our broadcast live from the Kraftverket in Troanos in Sweden. My name is Michelle Dooley Mahan and tonight I will be joined by my fellow residents on the Dylan Thomas Literary Residency in Studio Frame. On my left I have Mr Dominic Williams the from the University of Wales, uh, Trinity St David and the curator of the residency here and coordinator of the Fringe Festival. To the left of him is the beautiful Miss Tishani Doshi, uh, a writer based in India and travelling the globe at the minute, an award-winning writer of many, many books and poetry, which we will get into shortly. Uh, to the left of her, we have Mr. Anasur Rahman, originally from Bangladesh, now resident in Uppsala in Sweden, a poet, a journalist, and uh, a contributor to many magazines. And facing me, I have Mr. Anthony Jones, a poet from Carmarthen in South Wales, founder of Poetry and Pints, and a general all-round good egg. And facing me, the star of the show, the heart of the house, Mr. <laughs> Bjengt Björklund. <laughs> <laughs> poet, extraordinaire, <laughs> musician, drummer, raconteur, and general nice guy. Uh, welcome and thank you all for coming in this evening. It's great of you to give up your time uh, to talk about literally what we're doing here and what this what this residency means to you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to ask maybe Dominic is how did you become involved in this at all in the beginning? Uh, thanks for inviting us on this evening. You're welcome. I, I liked your Swedish accent. It, it, <laughs> it didn't start with Bengt. You proceeded on Uppsala. Yes, was, uh, yes. Wonderful to hear that. Any minute now I might interject with Pieter <laughs> Ökesen. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting for that. Yeah. Um, I, I've been working, well, I, I met you in, in Wexford originally over, over in Ireland. And I've been working with a couple of guys here in Sweden. Colm O'Keehan is probably the, uh, the hub of all this activity. Um, we've been doing stuff between Ireland and Sweden, creative activities for, for some time now. And um, I think this year being the centenary of Dylan Thomas was the perfect opportunity to take some of the heart of Wales and bring it over to Sweden. And so, um, so that's, that's where this they originally started. That's where the, the residency came from. Some of the discussions between um, Colm and myself and the other members of Coracle Europe uh, about activities that we wanted to, to take place and, and, and broaden the uh, the reach of what we were up to really okay thank you uh, Tishani the beautiful Tishani mm. who this week ladies and gentlemen has been called Tish Tina Tsunami <laughs> and Doshi <laughs> and Tashini oh, Tashini Tashini paste <laughs> how did you become involved in this well I think uh, Dom sent me an email <laughs> um, with a lot of other writers um, I I qualified on my sort of partial Welshness and uh, I was in Europe uh, and very keen to visit Scandinavia and Sweden because I'd never been to any of these countries so um, I acted on it. I said yes and applied. On it like a bonnet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good and are you loving it so far? Yeah I am. I really I've been sort of going non-stop. I haven't been able to write. I haven't had a place of my own so it's just been fantastic to have my little room to be writing to share the house with all of you and you know and all of these wonderful sounds mm. and, uh, and, and all of these strange ghosts that we that's share that's an electronic ghost mm. clanking mm. in the room mm. besides mm. the music mm. bands it's not um banked Borkland. it's not Bengt. <laughs> 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 ladies and gentlemen Bengt is rolling his beautiful eyes uh, moving swiftly along to Anasior can you tell us how you became involved with this as a, as a, um, by this time you all know Colm from Ireland who lives in Thronos. I call him the king of culture in or literature in uh, Thronos. <laughs> so <laughs> once he, invi he, invi he went to Uppsala to just hello, say hello to me, then uh, said uh, I want to collaborate, I want to know your activities in Uppsala. Then uh, the other day he called me, are you ready to come to Thronos one day in March? Then I said, why not? Then he invited me. Then I um, met the public at the library, and I was interviewed in re on radio and newspapers. And they said, uh, are you ready to come in Thronos and meet our friends from, from the countries in uh, Wales and Ireland and India in uh, this time in summer? Then I said, why not? Then I took the chance. But Anthony, the same question to you. Um, I, I'm very lucky to be here. Um, I, like everybody else, uh, was invited to apply. Uh, I did so, uh, and I, I didn't make the, the original cut. 
lucky uh, that, that an Irish uh, writer had to um, had to got the gallop and allergy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 couldn't make it, so I was able to make it, and um, I've just had a ball since I've been here. It's been great uh, hanging out with uh, my fellow residents and giving workshops and meeting the the the, the people of, of um, Tranos. And uh, it, it's, it's just been a fantastic time. It's just been... Uh, You've really embraced it, haven't you? Crea You're loving well, it. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean creatively, I've, do, I've done more than f for... Eight, you know, the, the atmosphere in here is a very creative atmosphere anyway. It breeds creativity. There's so much going on in this huge place we're staying in. Uh, and also, th there's a hardcore uh, sort of um, culture vulture scene of very few people actually in Tranos. But we, we've been engaging with the local uh, people on, on uh, uh, every day at two o'clock, we've been running workshops all through the residency, and uh, we see regular faces coming back. And every day we get one or two new new faces mm. as well. I'm going to move into the workshops uh, mm. in a couple of minutes. Okay. But you're really, really enjoying, and it's you were here by default, but really loving it. I'm so pleased I had the call. Okay. Thank you. Can I can I mention two people who are, who are missing, absent friends, before we get to the star yeah. of the show, um, <laughs> Natalie Holborough. Um, who I'm sure you'll talk about later, um, who had to leave us. But um, the, 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 um, during the selection process, Patrick McGuinness uh, was chosen to come on the, on the residency. Um, unfortunately, Patrick had an awful lot of um, exam boards to deal with. Um, he, he's working in the University of Oxford. Um, that was what dragged him away from the residency and what enabled us to bring in another in Welsh poet Scotland. to to replace him. Yes, I'm the only Brilliant. Yeah. Invited to this place. <laughs> 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 I actually I read about it in a Facebook group for the popular poetry, which is a magazine. Mm. And I applied and didn't think much about it until um, Dominic wrote that I was a part of the residency. Excellent. OK, thank you all very much. Uh, just I'm going to throw it out now as a group question so anybody who likes can answer. Uh, how are you finding Sweden and especially Tronos for the Swedes? How are you finding it here? Uh, I am Swede so I mean it's, 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 for, me, for me it's like a typical small town in Sweden. It's, uh, Does it differ wildly from Stockholm? Of course I mean Stockholm is the uh, capital is two million people here and you have 18,000. Obviously the, the pace here is much slower. Uh, the cultural life is much smaller. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a father of a daughter and uh, she's approaching seven years old. And there is a suburb in Uppsala, it is called Gotunda. So we used to go to Gotunda for shopping. And one day she called, is Gotunda capital of Uppsala? So when uh, we are in Netronos to celebrate the 100 years of Dylan Thomas, then I heard the same feeling. He's as if Tronos is the capital of Sweden. Mm, wow, that's <laughs> nice. That's <laughs> very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tish, how are you finding it? Well, it's it's kind of um, strange. I think I have a karma to be visiting southern suburban little towns. I've spent a great deal of my life in different countries, but always in the south. And uh, so it's kind of fun to be in south in the south of Sweden and it feels strange with all the big American cars mm. and um you know yeah, it feels like being an extra in Fargo or yeah. something <laughs> doesn't it when you see all that I feel like I'm in a Coen Brothers movie yeah. yes yeah yeah so it's it's sort of I don't know what I expected I don't really think that I had any great expectations except I knew that there would be these fabulous long summer nights and there would be lakes but aside from that I had no visual do you know I wasn't expecting anything. Yeah, before I came out here, I had written a piece about I can't wait to lie around a Swedish lake uh, and just chill and relax. Mm. And I thought there'd be a lot of mosquitoes, uh, none of which happened. Chilling and relaxing is a distant memory. <laughs> this is about our fifth uh, workshop thing today. Uh, and everybody's very, very busy. So I'd like to thank everyone for literally foregoing any uh, food you may have thought you were eating <laughs> because uh, we're going straight from here uh, to yet another Another event, which Dominic, would you tell us about that this evening? Um, I can, but can, can I just say about Ben's um, comment about uh, it, it being small culturally? Um, because I don't think I'm realizing that. Um, we're here, we're in a bubble, we're, we're, we're in our own creative cultural bubble, um, which is within this 
very huge house but it's spreading uh, and, we, well, and we, we expand that bubble as we walk around Tranas, I think. And so I find myself meeting new people in Tranas, um, going to new places, but I still feel that creativity and that, 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 that sense of culture around me. So I don't notice that you, you may do coming from another Swedish town, the, um, the smallness of culture. It's only when I walk out of the bubble uh, when I walk into the residential areas, because I've not been staying in the residency of the house, that I suddenly find myself in a place that feels like Sunday afternoon all the time. Mm. You know, when you get mm. out into the... It's very the like that. I said that too. I, I must also add that uh, it's much easier to get, get in contact with people in a small town than mm -hmm. like in Stockholm. True. And then people actually know getting to start to know who we are because you are in the paper almost every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they have a paper every day, which is bizarre in itself, right? Can I make an observation about that? Well, I think about Sweden is, uh, it seems that at one time it, 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 it's a very liberal state, you know, it, it's a very sort of, it feels like a very pla safe place to be in uh, and, you know, everything is valid and, you know, your opinion is valid and, you know, they, they do a lot for social welfare um, and, and, and things around that. And on the other hand, it's a massive nanny state where you can only buy um, a beer of any height, alcohol content, that's above 3.5% everybody, uh, in the state-owned um, mm. beer shops. And that's at only very limited times as well. Mm. So on the one hand, it's a very, it seems like a very liberal state. But on the other hand, it seems like the... the it's liberal just to a degree. Exactly. We will let you be this liberal, yeah. but God forbid you should get falling yeah. down drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime you like. Or using drugs, for heaven's sake. Or yeah. using drugs. <laughs> Moving swiftly along. Yeah. Uh, okay, should we, should we go back to tonight's event then? Is that, is that where we're going? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, t t tonight's event is another um, showing from, from our residents. The, the engagement uh, by all the residents with the local community has been fantastic. Uh, and at the t sometimes it's been very, very intimate, as uh, Anthony's mentioned, the, the workshops. And sometimes it's a public performance. Um, as is going to be this evening. The, the writers are all going to be reading some of their favorite pieces from Dylan Thomas. Um, some of their own work, of course, which may be inspired by Dylan Thomas, may be responses to. And, and I think that's important that um, we as a group are bringing Dylan Thomas to the world. We didn't need to bring Dylan Thomas to the world, really. The world knows of him. Um, but we're elevating the, the status of a poet in this town, and um, hopefully, the people of this town will then realise that they want to elevate the status of their it own It must writers. give you a massive amount of pride as a Welshman and as a lover of Thomas and of poetry in general to bring that to this little tiny Swedish bubble. It does, yes, yeah. Um, I mean, we, we, we come from a bubble. We come from a very small country. Um, we come from a, a very small culture. Um, but I think we have great hearts and uh, hearts that are full of, of literature and I, I, I come from West Wales now, I've been living there for 20 years, and it's the, it's the centre, I think, of the, the oral tradition of the spoken word, and it's just so natural to come and share that with, with other voices, and um, unfortunately not with other tongues, because so many of us are monoglot English, but um, we, we're engaging, for sure. Okay. Um, one week in, well, one week and a couple of days into the residency, how do you feel, Anthony, that you've benefited? And actually, I'm really pleased the train is going by, and <laughs> it's one of the things I'll actually miss uh, when I leave here. I'll miss that train. I'll miss the sounds of it. Uh, before I came out, somebody said to me, do you like trains? And I went, yeah, actually. And he said, well, Jesus, good, because all you're going to hear for the whole time is the trains. So, bizarrely, there is the soundtrack of the train. Anthony, yeah, to back to you, how, uh, one week in, how do you feel you've benefited really from the facilities and from the whole setup here in, in Krafakit? Okay, uh, well, the, the facilities were amazing. Um, in, in it, um, the, the, there's so much space in this, in this place. I think I've only seen this massive, massive building which we, we occupy. I think I've only seen about half of what goes on. Mm. There are locked doors everywhere and sometimes they're open and you can see a little bit. Is it and true that you wrote, why are we locked in on the notice board? I did write that. <laughs> <laughs> and you're now talking about Finally the lock. Do know. you feel like a resident? Uh, I, I, well, to begin with, when I, when I felt that I was locked in, um, uh, those uh, due to some uh, key problems, um, uh, not understanding where the doors were really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or which doors uh, we can uh, open. It, it did feel as, as though I, I was trapped in this weird sort of um, uh, 
Lewis Carroll sort of <laughs> adventure. <laughs> Stairs like, leading and nowhere and, and locked yeah, doors and, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And, uh, but no, it's been a great. It's, it's, it, first of all, as far as the residency goes, and, and, and speaking to other other writers and from different parts of the world, um, that has been a, a, an immense privilege for me to have here. I really love that. Um, I've really loved interacting with the community. I think I've made lifelong friends uh, within our community of writers here and within the, within the sort of cultural community, if you like, of, of Tranos. The Pieters um, and the Magnuses yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. yeah. All these, these great guys who, who give of, of this time very free. They're very them. supportive. That's one thing yeah, I and really and have they, to say. They're, they're so supportive. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, a lot of the things that they do in order to get sort of the arts thing going in, in, in Tranos is done out of love. It's done. Um, without a pay, without any great reward or, or, or any great um, kudos, even, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's just because of the sheer love of it and these close knit guys who just keep digging in and digging in and digging in, chipping away at the cultural side. Mm -hmm. And I hope if we leave any kind of legacy here, it's that we might have sort of lit a fire which might continue to burn. And um, yeah, just. Yeah, we did spark. Let's see what, what happens. Maybe we have a conflagration in ten years. Okay, Tishani, how are you feeling about that? How do you think you've benefited in any way from a group mentality, from a shared house, from anything that may have been on offer here that you couldn't have accessed anywhere else? Yeah, I think it's it's always a sort of um, a lottery when you put six strangers in a house. <laughs> and I think uh, television has benefited greatly <laughs> from this format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, you know, when you're forced to live with people, it brings out certain things in your own nature, in your own character. And that, in its turn, reflects your writing. And it's, it's you know, it's just out of your normal life, whatever your normal life is. So for me, I always find, as a writer, any experience, uh, something like this, intriguing. And I find it such a surreal space to be inhabiting because first you find out it used to be a fur factory. Mm. Then there's all these punk bands that, yeah. you know, are rehearsing. Then one day there's a whole pile of clothes in the middle of the floor, <laughs> which you can help yourself to, you know. And, uh, and I just think, you know, that was bizarre. In my normal yeah, life, yeah so. it's so wouldn't, it so wouldn't. Um, and it's your, before we go to a break, I'll ask you the same thing. As a, as a, Tishani said, it's a lottery, but I didn't think uh, that uh, the, I, I, it would be good or not. I'm in a group, when, when I'm in the group, then I truly feel uh, very alone. But when I'm back in my room, then I, I feel no, they are in my mind. As, uh, I found a friend, uh, Dominic, and I could call him as uh, a man with love and uh, energy. And uh, Colm was a man with uh, love and integrity. And uh, I I was also lucky to get, uh, the, I speak my Bengali, English in Bengali accent it's from the beginning to the end. I don't know why. But uh, <laughs> I, I feel the difference and I, I got some lessons from Dominic. And we started as a friends, now we became brothers. Mm, and how yeah. lovely. And, lovely. and uh, yeah. then uh, I also got uh, collaboration with uh, Natalie. Yes, and yes. You must miss her, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I wrote a report oh, about we, her. We all missed her. But it's not yeah. been finished. And then uh, I also got very ongoing and growing collaboration, both with uh, Dominic and Peter Nivelli from Thomas. Okay. That's a great achievement, but conclusion is, Writing is a very individual and very... It's a solitary pursuit. Mm. Yes, absolutely. Because you have to spend, could, I, could I just say that one of the things that I've really, really enjoyed in this residency, Michelle, is your fantastic cooking. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. They blow all the microphones. I'm blushing. <laughs> uh, thank you. And on that note, I will cook you something later. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to take a quick break. Uh, I'm going to lead into a piece of music, which is Loudon Wainwright and the drinking song. Uh. Thank you. 
Okay, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, where I am live from the Craft Fakit in Tronos in Sweden with a number of uh, individuals from different countries. I have th You have an Irish lady interviewing Swedish, Welsh, and Indian writers and poets. And to that end, I'm now going to ask Ms. Tishani Doshi to read something for us. And first of all, she will explain maybe where she composed it and a little bit of the backstory about the piece itself. Okay, well, I'll, I'm just going to do a, a poem that doesn't need much explaining. Okay. Um, it's a poem I've read before and you've heard before, but uh, it's called Love Poem. Okay. And I'm trying to think when I wrote it, but I'm guessing it was the, at the end of a love affair. <laughs> at the end, <laughs> not at the beginning. No. <laughs> well, yeah. So should I just... Yes, just go ahead. Thank you. Love Poem. Ultimately, we will lose each other to something. I would hope for grand circumstance, death or disaster, but it might not be that way at all. It might be that you walk out one morning after making love to buy cigarettes and never return, or I fall in love with another man. It might be a slow drift into indifference, Either way, we'll have to learn to bear the weight of the eventuality that we will lose each other to something. So why not begin now, while your head rests like a perfect moon in my lap and the dogs on the beach are howling? Why not reach for the seam in the South Indian night and tear it just a little so the falling can begin? Because later, when we cross each other on the streets and are forced to look away, when we've thrown the disregarded pieces of our togetherness into bedroom drawers and the smell of our bodies is disappearing like the sweet decay of lilies, what will we call it when it's no longer love? Thank you. That's beautiful. It's really beautiful. I really love that. Okay, and uh, Bient, I'd like to ask you to follow up that, please, if you wouldn't mind. And again, give us just a little bit of maybe uh, the urge that caused you to create it. <coughs> well, this was written a few days ago here at the residency. So it's about me. <laughs> 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 Must be. Um, it goes like this. Small town ticking summer on a Sunday still, the hot salt and sparrows rushing in the feeding wind, sunken bells in watery sleep, keep small men marching in lilac silence memory, snakes slithering hollow men, sleepwalking in blue vapor, wag tail to the morning. Thank you. And now I would like to go to Mr. Anisur Rahman and ask you to give us your piece. I believe you're reading in Bengali for us today. Yeah. Thank you. Then, uh, if you have time, then you can read Polish in English. Okay, thank you. And uh, you can read the music of the language. I'll just tell our listeners that the title of the piece you're reading is Summer School, mm -hmm. written by yourself and translated by Mr. Dominic Williams. Yeah. And it is written during the residency. Yes. Summer school. Din ti khub shundor, ei grishye, ei jole, ei nobe, ei robe. Bohe shumiron, ei jono pobe. Din ti khub shundor, ei jatra, ei bolle, ei chole, mati alin gone. Phole modu, phole rosh, ei gohin bolle. Din ti khub shundor, firi shubo khone, ei khore, ei lone, moji nachi gane. Din ti khub shundor. এই গ্রীষ্মে খেলি জলে খেলি কুলে আনন্দ রণ যখন তখন দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে যা কিছু ঘটে দিনে ও রাতে এই ঘরে ওই ধারে দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে আমি চাই তুমি আগুন আমি চাই তুমি ফাগুন দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে এই এইটাই ডেল আমি কাঠি তুমি গ্রেল দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে আমি বোনো তুমি উতাই তুমি ফুল তুমি ফল 
দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে গেল গ্রীষ্মে প্রতি গ্রীষ্মে আমি বুনু তুমি উপায় দিনটি খুব সুন্দর এই গ্রীষ্মে আমি বুনু কামড়ে তাই আর যে কিছু বাকি নাই Thank you, thank you, that was rather lovely. And uh, rather than go directly into that, because I just want to keep an eye on the clock, I'm going to go straight into Mr. Anthony Jones and ask him, would he share with us something he's composed on the residency or recently and with a little bit of backstory? Well, so enough, um, Michelle, I, I'm going to uh, read the, the, my contribution to Red Lamp Black Piano. Brilliant, uh, the, brilliant. The, 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 the put up by Tyler Press uh, in association with the Cork and Millish Cabaret. And uh, it was quite funny because we both discovered that each of us was in this, uh, yeah. this anthology, but neither of us had read each other before we met. <laughs> or any of it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you not read mine? Nobody oh, reads it. Shit. Everybody's in it and buys anyway, it. Uh, uh, this, yeah. is, this is my contribution to it. Thanks, uh, Ant. Here we go. It's called Birthday Poem. It was the highlight of my birthday when we lit the Chinese lantern and we wished for something better and though it wasn't mentioned, we both knew what we wanted, like more money in our pocket to feed our hungry children. We held the paper open and set the wick on fire with red-headed wooden matches, and it grew to its full volume and climbed above the houses, and we both knew what we wished for, though it was never uttered, like an end to the atrocities we watched daily on the telly as we ate our TV dinners. It grew smaller, climbing higher, as a pinpoint in the distance, and we both knew, we both looked at each other, and we both knew what we wanted, but we knew we'd never say it. That's lovely. It seemed quite emotional uh, reading that. Is it a particular, <laughs> uh, apart um, from the fly that landed on your forehead? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, well, yeah, it is actually because um, it was an ex it was a, it was something it was a true story. Um, we were I was going through a relationship problem, and, and that was about three years ago, and uh, we did actually break up three months ago. Okay, it also it's, it's hugely. It, it, um, really it does, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the, the, those pieces really resonate with the listener or with or with the audience when you're performing. To be honest, Michelle, I think it's a also result that I think we're all in a very high emotional state because of the World Cup. I mean, we've got very late nights all <laughs> last week, and you know now now that the World Cup is over, we have a chance to have early nights and recoup. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah, we have a big discussion now about Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're coming closer to the end, uh, which has really kind of flown by, but uh, because it's been lovely, and it's been lovely uh, as uh, a member of the group to now sit here as the interviewer and thankfully not have to perform mm. or not have to Are read. Sure? Or I, I may actually You're performing all the time. Yeah, I'm always on. Uh, there's a gentleman at home who responds to the uh, moniker of he who must not be named, who actually said one day, "You've no off switch," <laughs> you know, and I think that's that's a curse. I actually live with since I was a small child is this constantly up and going now what now what are we doing now what are we doing I always want to know what's next so in that I'm leading into if you were given uh, absolute unlimited money unlimited money tomorrow morning what would you do and I'd like to go around the table please and if you could just all give me maybe a sentence or two so I'm hitting Dominic with it so that by the time it gets to Bianca we will have quite a selection I would imagine wow. you've unlimited money what are you going to do okay wow that's um that's, that's, that puts you on the spot, doesn't mm. it? But I'm immediately responding, I guess, in um, I, I'm not running away to Barbados with my family. I'm, I'm, I'm within this cultural context still. Um, no, so no, I don't know, silly, I, no, well, th that's where, well, I guess that's where my thinking was going anyway, you know, um, and I can tie, I can tie things in. I'm a Welshman, I'm, I, I'm Welshman, and um, when, when I think of winning the lottery, and, and I, I think of what sort of stupid things do people spend money on, you know, and um, I guess it's things like that that, that that are just slightly beyond my reach, like the benches at the Millennium Stadium to watch every international match. So, so I guess if I had limited, unlimited funds tomorrow, um, I would see the Welsh team running out 
um, for their next international with a poem emblazoned across their uh, across their kit. Wow, that's nice. Is that Brains SA? <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah. No, it's not a poem. It's a I think Brains SA is a uh, flash fiction. I think you'll find out. <laughs> Tish. Well, I've sort of never believed in the idea of lottery and gambling and things like that because I think to get a huge amount of money is basically something that's corrupting and that it would screw you, you know, so I'd, I've never desired it. But say a big pile of cash arrived <laughs> in my, my front door, um, I don't know, I, I think... Um, I think I would like to be a patron in the oldest sense of the people who supported the arts and culture because I think Nouveau Riche is all about tacky, having yachts mm. and this and that and I think bring me back those wonderful patrons who supported musicians and painters and poets and so that would make it easier for people like myself to live and to earn a living. So that's what I would be if I had all An that. altruistic motive. Plus other stuff like, you know, holidays, Ikea. And yeah. and oh, Ikea, forget, you can <laughs> buy Ikea. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see patronage come back. Um, patronage is hugely important, and if there's yeah. any multimillionaires listening to the show, you can get in touch with us if you would like to either become a patron or donate or become involved in any way <laughs> with back my you. ESB bill. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your, yourself. Uh, to reply to this question, I would like to refer Bill Gates. Bill Gates has two quotes. One is very stupid and one is very wise. The I'll start with the wise one. The wise one was, if you have enough money, then you will forget who you are. Then if I get enough money, I will not forget who I am. And uh, the second thing, uh, when you not have uh, money, then do, nobody will know you, who you are. So that I will also remember it. Mm -hmm. Then the, and the stupid comment from uh, Bill Gates is, he wanted to have a own language, own dictionary for the world. Then I will also, if I have enough money, then I will try to make as many languages, as many dictionaries and diversities of language, literature, culture and life. Mm. Okay, that's very magnanimous of you. Thank you. And Well, I was paying off my enormous debt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and as long as I, I Could you pay your bar tab with this? We all banked a couple of facts. Uh, as, long, as long as I could have, you know, have to live comfortably, I don't really want you know, cute bitches myself. So. I hate to sound a little too altruistic, but I just get it donate it all into, you know, what I would call altruistic things. Mm -hmm. You know, I think mean, mm -hmm. Bill Gates is amazing. He's, he's, he's donated so much into, into science research. I would love to see an end to, to world, world poverty. I'd love to see water for everybody in, everywhere in the world. I'd love to, you know, see an end to suffering of, of, of children everywhere. Let's see an end to war. What can you do? If it's unlimited money, well, then perhaps we can achieve that. But of course, with the, with the unlimited money, becomes the opportunity for unlimited corruption. Mm -hmm. so Absolute power corrupts, corrupt. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And finally, to Bengt. I guess the first thing I do is pay off my house, uh, take my family for a holiday. We haven't been on a holiday for 15 years. Uh, thirdly, I probably would like to start a publishing company and publish. All the people I, I think mm. are writing good mm. stuff who are not published yet. Yeah, yeah. Fourthly, I guess I, I joined up with you and give away loads of money to clean water, toilets, um, small children that die too early, etc., etc., and animal wars and. Mm. Yeah. With a limited money, who knows what's possible? Yeah. Um. I think a publishing house could achieve that if it was the right publishing house. Yeah. <laughs> I think mean, you could do a publishing house without huge amounts of money. You don't need to wait for that mm. lottery to what work you out. Do you do money money? Well, yeah, what about you, Michelle? Oh yeah, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> what do you, what do, you do with that limited money, Michelle? Make it make a feast for the whole world. Yeah, I think I'd be. I think I'd like to try and uh, fund research into Alzheimer cures, or into something like that. I said once before, and it's quite trite, and I hope I actually don't go ching. Uh, I said I would like to uh, put my mother on a jet and literally fly her somewhere where they did um, tests and interventions and tried different drugs, uh, clinics in Switzerland or bathing with monks in Nepal, anything, 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 yeah, anything that could, yeah, yeah. To, to, to be that woman who, or, you know, that it comes back 
from that kind of illness or is a miracle cure. I watched actually footage of uh, Roald Dahl. His wife had had a massive, massive stroke and um, she was really in, inert and lifeless and he was advised by everybody around him to just put her in a home and to pay for her care and to walk away and he absolutely refused point blank and there's black and white uh, video footage of this and it's disturbing and beautiful to watch and it's in a beautiful country garden and there's a team of nurses and him and they're moving her moving her placing her limbs moving and it is uncomfortable and she's making noise and but he brought her back he brought her back and if I had unlimited money I'd like to bring mum back oh, baby. and on that note I'm going to finish uh, our little piece in uh, in Tranos and with many many thanks to my guests to Bient Bjorklund to Anthony Jones to Anasur Rahman, to Shani Doshi, Mr. Dominic Williams, our sound engineer Joachim, and I'd like for the week that's in it, Jakob, I'm sorry Jakob, uh, our sound engineer Jakob, we can edit, uh, I'd like to finish with a poem from Mr. Dylan Thomas called Was There a Time? Was there a time when dancers with their fiddles in children's circuses could stay their troubles? There was a time they could cry over books, but time has sent its maggot on their track. Under the arc of the sky they are unsafe. What's never known is safest in this life. Under the sky signs they who have no arms, have cleanest hands, and as the heartless ghost alone's unhurt, so the blind man sees best. Perfect. <laughs>